to this video. I'm not going to be playing guitar for this entire video. This was just the musical introduction because this video is a little bit uh, maybe dark or at least the inspiration was a little bit dark. It wasn't the best experience, the inspiration for this video, but I think it is a worthy video to make. So in this video I'm going to be talking about operational security, informational security, and there's a concept of open source intelligence. So <laughs> why am I talking about this? So these are actually, I had a really interesting class at MGMOL uh, about open source intelligence. And it was just some random class that we had that was like voluntary. You could just show up some, you know, you could just go and listen to that class. You didn't have to do anything. You just like, it was like a lecture. And that's sort of, um, you know, some of the things that they talked about in that class I'm gonna be talking about in this video. So yeah, you can say that M. Guimau has definitely helped me uh, be a better software engineer because the thinking that you have to adopt when it comes to open source intelligence, it's very similar to being a smart contract auditor. So if you haven't seen my other videos, uh, may, may have mentioned that I work as a smart contract auditor. So what is an auditor? An auditor is someone who looks at a code base and uh, usually, well, if we're in DeFi, um, looking for bugs, critical vulnerabilities in a code base in order to prevent those vulnerabilities to be deployed to production because if they are deployed to production then people can potentially lose millions of dollars. So essentially you are the last line of defense essentially when you work as an auditor or as a white hat hacker uh, to find these bugs before they are exploited by uh, someone else. So you, that's essentially the job of a smart contract auditor. You're looking for bugs in code. So it's interesting when I look and I get a code base, I, it's very, I'm very fast to understand whether or not I will find bugs or not. You can just look at a code base and you just get a vibe. It's just the little things. And the more little sketchy things there are, the more my auditing bug detector goes off. So, and also what's interesting about being a smart contract auditor is that you have to adopt this mentality of being extremely pessimistic. And, you know, I, I, I'm a positive person. I like to attract, I like to be positive because when you are positive, you attract good things into your life. So it's difficult for me being an auditor because I have to adopt the inverse of being positive, which is being extremely pessimistic. And what do I mean by pessimistic when it comes to looking at code? You essentially have to assume that the code that you're looking at has bugs in it. So you assume that the code that you've been given is vulnerable. And by adopting this type of mentality, you essentially, you attract those things. It's like this law of attraction. You, you assume that there are problems and the problems come to you. And for being a bug bounty, person or person who's an auditor, white hat hacker, whatever you want to call it, uh, this is the necessary attitude and frame of mind that you need to adopt in order to become a successful auditor. So, but this frame of mind, it has its benefits in other, let's just say other realms uh, outside of uh, white hat hacking. So, so yeah. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I can't, the thing is, I cannot tell the full story that what happened to me because I need to let some time pass. Like it, probably like three, four, five years before I can fully disclose the story uh, publicly. I mean, because I want to maintain privacy of everyone involved. Uh, but yeah, it's just, there's a lot of interesting things that I've taken away from this experience uh, that I had. And that's sort of the point of this video. I kind of want to talk about these things without revealing anything about the situation. So as an auditor, you all the time as an auditor, you, you see variables in the code and you're thinking, okay, A and B, these are two variables, just hypothetical variables in a smart contract. And you think, how are these two variables 
Like they're, you know they're connected. And then there's some third variable, C. And you, and you think, okay, if I can somehow manipulate A, will that have an effect on C that um, the developer of the smart contract did not anticipate? And you are always thinking like this, if A, then B, then like, it's just, you, it's just how, this is how you have to think. Uh, so you spend a lot of time as an auditor thinking about how, what, why, where. You're just asking all these questions and you have to dig to the source of everything. And so I guess the reason why I'm good at auditing is because I'm extremely curious. I get like obsessed about like finding these things and I enjoy it. It's stressful, but I enjoy it because it's like a, it's a puzzle and you have to solve this puzzle. It's like a mystery. I feel like I'm Sherlock Holmes or something. I have to solve this mystery in the code base and um, yeah, it's just sort of how it feels. But the thing is, is when you adopt this mentality when it comes to your personal life, you can end up finding things that you may have not wanted to have known. And, uh, and other people probably didn't even know that you could have found this information. So, so yeah, so again, at MGMO, I had this very, very interesting course about open source intelligence. And what's one of the people that, you know, the people that came and talked about this, they said, you know, like pretty much 90% of the information that you're like looking to find about a topic or a person or whatever, 90% of the information is out in the open. Like you don't have to like be a super hacker to like hack their messages or anything. No, it's just everything is out there. So this sort of relates to the personal situation that I had, which is kind of interesting. I can't talk about it, but so yeah. Um, so also, I also work as a smart contract engineer in the DeFi space. And so working as an engineer in the DeFi space and as an auditor, and I also worked at a VC fund, like part of the job for all these titles is like thinking about risk. You're always analyzing your personal risk. You are always thinking about your vulnerability and how you can hedge that vulnerability. How, you, how can you, you have some risk and your assumption of why you adopt that risk is that there is some upside potential to that risk. But you need to hedge the risk so that if things go to shit, you are protected from that. I mean, you're still going to get hurt a little bit, but you are partially protected from that. So, you know, when you work in a VC fund, you're always looking at the portfolio or if you're trading yourself, you always have to look at the portfolio and know your upside, your downside and all the risk, your risk profile and how you can hedge certain events. So I think like this, I mean, I spend 12 hours a day, seven days a week thinking in, in this mindset. And, you know, I'm extremely picky about the people that I adopt, you know, I, I bring into my close circle. So whenever I'm, um, you know, vetting people to come into my close circle, you know, and everyone does this. I'm not saying like I'm not some like, you know, I go and do like this background check on everyone. No, of course not. But everyone, you, you need to know a little bit about the people that you're going to be interacting with and who you're going to be associating with, especially if it's someone who potentially could be very close to you. So my skills as an auditor <laughs> came in handy and um, I essentially, and again, I can't talk about the situation. Uh, and this is not because it's like, secret or anything. I just want to protect the privacy of people involved. Uh, but yeah, it's just like the point, my point is, is you have to be extremely careful about what you upload to social media. And when someone like myself comes along, I can deduce certain things that, you know, you would have never thought you would ever have revealed on social media. But again, my job is literally auditor. It's one of my jobs. I work at a DeFi startup where I'm constantly thinking about hedging risks, how we can protect uh, you know, certain vulnerabilities, how we can prevent certain vulnerabilities. So this is just my mindset. And um, yeah, so again, when you're posting information on social media, you need to be aware of the people 
who also post like okay this is another like hypothetical situation so other people have mentioned and there's been tons of cases where like for example Pavel Durov it's a very similar type of thing where Pavel Durov was like posting certain images in certain locations and his girlfriend or whatever was also posting similar pictures in similar locations and people were able to deduce that they were together at the same place so so yeah it's just you have to be extremely careful and when you think that you know there's no way there's no link like you you know between two people right trust me there is a link and it can be something as benign as posting a just a picture of a sunset or a picture of just literally anything okay so another final point that i want to talk about is privacy so i i I'm extreme supporter of privacy. I think that privacy is a fundamental human right. I feel like everyone deserves privacy. I feel like uh, it's it's so, so important. And in the modern world, so many people voluntarily give up their privacy, myself included. And I'm gonna talk about why I do that as well. So, so many people just voluntarily reveal their privacy. They just give it out for free. and. Part of it is hubris, ego, whatever, you know, you want to show off that you're in a certain location, you want to do, you know, I, I get it. I, I'm the same way. I'm exactly the same way. Uh, but the, the thing is, is if you have any confidential information, and I don't mean like at a government level, I'm just talking like personal stuff, right? If you want to, like, okay, if you're posting stuff that is somehow in any way related to something that you don't want everyone in the world to know, then you should not post that at all, ever, okay? So, so that's just what I'm saying. Just, um, you know, I value privacy and I understand that people like to post pictures on Instagram and whatnot, uh, but just know that everything that you post, everything that you write, everything that you say, there is a trail behind you that you can pretty much find out pretty much everything about a certain person, even if they have very, very little photos on Instagram uh, or any other social media or just anything. You can find out pretty much everything about a person. So my final point that I want to talk about is, you know, I work as an auditor and most auditors, DeFi smart contract auditors, they maintain their privacy and they, they stay anonymous. And the reason why is because they want to, again, they hedge the risk because if they disclose some bug or vulnerability in a code base, uh, they don't want that project to potentially interpret that disclosure as malicious. Meaning, so they don't want to face the consequences, potential consequences of going to court. So even though, let's say you disclose some vulnerability and it saves the protocol, a lot of auditors are worried that they can still be brought to court for not properly disclosing certain things. And but the thing is, I think that it's extremely important in our world for at least some people to be public about who they are and attach their ideas and their beliefs to a face, to a person. Because I feel like a lot of people are extremely afraid to say certain things. And, you know, my opinions are not that controversial. I, I mean, I personally don't think that. I don't think they're that controversial. Some people might disagree. But this is why I do everything. Everything about me is public. And, you know, I don't think I have any shadows, like in, any skeletons in, in my closet or like skeletons in the shadows or whatever. But, um, you know, people who do a deep dive on me might find some things that I'm not even aware of. Uh, but this is also why I'm very public is because pretty much everything that I talk about on the Internet is open like I'm very open about every aspect of my life and in a way that gives me extreme confidence because I know that I am not exaggerating anything I am not faking any literally anything everything that I talk about I'm just trying to be as true to myself in this exact moment as as possible so so yeah, a lot of auditors and people who are anonymous, I think that they are actually, not all, but a lot of people, they are just afraid 
to connect their beliefs and their ideas to their person, to the individual. And I, I think that in today's world with all these trolls and all these people on the internet, it's super important to have at least some people who stand up for what they think and, um, and actually connect their beliefs to their, their face, right? But that's not to say that, you know, I don't value privacy. Like I value privacy, but everything's public at the same time. So that's sort of like my, my thing, right? Um, so yeah, the point of this video was to talk about just <laughs> operational security. Loose lips sink ships. <laughs> so if you post something to Instagram, you need to be hyper analyzing everything that you post. Otherwise, someone like me comes along and I, I can, I can just, I have a vibe. I get like a certain sixth sense that I have that I can just feel things out. And I'm very quick to find certain things. And again, like I, I have certain bugs that I've found on uh, certain bug bounty platforms. I cannot disclose them, but I can sort of say approximately what happened. And it's the same situation here where, again, like <laughs> these, <laughs> it's just funny. It's like, no other person would have found this minute detail. Like in five years, I really want to like talk about this specific situation uh, because it's quite humorous. I think it's a hilarious story. But uh, but yeah, it's just like everything you post on social media. There's a story behind it. So just be careful. And if you're posting stuff to social media, be aware that everything you post tells a story about you and um, yeah, just be aware of that. So I hope you liked this video. I hope it wasn't too obscure and too murky. Um, Cause I kind of, you know, I'm not talking specifically about what happened, but I hope you understand that it's important to protect your privacy. If you want to protect your privacy, if you don't want to be in the public eye, uh, otherwise your data tells a story. I'll see you next time guys. Thanks.